fathers of Reddit, what did your daughter's boyfriend do for you to hate love him? Story 1. My daughter has depression. She's always been the black sheep of the family, the one daughter closer to me than their mom. She'd rather lay around and listen to metal than go out with her sisters and would rather go on a hike than shopping. Still, sometimes she does and wants things that I just don't get. I think a lot of the quirks come from the depression, and that's just hard to deal with sometimes. And it means she has needs. And it takes a special kind of person to deal with that correctly. She's my little girl and I want only the best for her. So then here comes this scruffy-faced, long-haired kid. When you talk to him, you feel like you're talking to Plato in the flesh. But his school performance is less than stellar. He has a terrible work ethic, as far as I can tell. He was smart, but I just felt like he was destined to have no real-world success whatsoever. But I paid attention because my daughter's not stupid and I figured that there must be some reason she chose this guy. Soon it became very apparent why. He gets her, and damned if it doesn't seem almost supernatural sometimes. She can be having a very bad day with the depression, but not long after she's with him, she's laughing. And it's obvious he loves her, just from the way he talks to her and looks at her. Not in a lustful way, but in a caring way. I asked, why him? And she explained to me that for some reason, around him she feels calm and happy. She said that even when they first met, she could talk to him for hours and hours without getting tired at all, like she did with most people after a few minutes. They have this dynamic about them as well. She's practical and straightforward, with her feet on the ground. He's thoughtful and abstract, head in the sky. Together, they seem to keep each other in line. In fact, the whole way they operated reminded me of an old married couple. And there's something just so damned likable about the guy. You get a sense of honesty, integrity, and a healthy dose of idealism when you talk to him. He talks about how he wants to make the world a better place. And just by the way he says it, you almost believe that he really could. So maybe against my better judgment, he got my seal of approval. My daughter wouldn't be happy with a someone practical, really. She needs someone like that. He makes her happy. And I think that's best for her. Edit. Wow, this blew up gold and everything. I was going to leave this account and be done with it. Since I'm not a frequent Redditor. But I feel like I have to add a little something because of this response. Thank you for all the replies. It's good to know that so many people found this story heartwarming. It's also interesting to know that this is apparently not a lone case, as quite a few replies have said that it's similar to themselves or people they know. I guess it makes sense, but call me stupid because I'd never really considered it before. Some questions have arisen about approximately where we're from, or if you know us. I'm going to leave these unanswered, just for privacy's sake. I'm a private sort of guy. Some people have asked if they are still together. They are, and no worries, they're both doing just fine. How I wrote it. My assessment about his future seemed a little harsh. There was not much question about his ability to get or hold a job. It was more the idea of getting and holding a well-paying job. Maybe I'm just a cynical old man, but I feel like the future of the stereotypical artist or philosopher is not a stable one. They're a very specialized sort, and their sort of specialization just isn't commonly applicable. He's proven himself to be mature and able, though. I think that at the time he needed a little help getting going, but now the gears are turning. I certainly don't expect him to be a failure in life. Wow, that's such a touching story. It's amazing how love can really make a difference, even in the toughest of times. Story 2. My ex-girlfriend's stepdad is probably one of the best people I know. He welcomed me into their family when I was struggling with finances and working two jobs. They were upper middle class with a bit of disposable income, and they fed me pretty often, so I always wanted to help where I could. Chores, moving, watching the house, errands. It's a family of four very emotional females and him. Gotta be stressful. He was a networking engineer and knew my love for computers. Also a huge nerd like myself. Weird movies, video games, a whole lot of things his four female housemates didn't share a passion for. He'd invite me to his work to talk and even tried to get me hired with him. Ultimately, he is the reason I went back to school. The relationship didn't work out. One night he picked me up to talk. He convinced me not to go back to her and dropped a lot of information on me about who she really was. At this point, she had already cheated on me, but for him to open my eyes about his stepdaughter so that I could move on in my life and find someone better was amazing. We still meet. She has no idea, but we play Destiny and Halo when we can online. I move into my own place in a week, and I honestly am wrestling with the idea of inviting him over for a break from that hellhole to watch Volcano High. The biggest thing that told me he cared about me was this. You care about her. We see it every day, and she couldn't care less. Nothing will be enough for her, and I don't want that torture for you. You deserve to be happy and appreciated. I've been trying to tell you for a while she isn't going to work with you. Story 3. I raised my sister as my daughter, so I don't know if mine counts. My younger sister has dated some serious jerks in the past. She actually had to break up with one because he literally had no personality. None. 
That's the only reason she broke up with him. After a few months, she found it creepy that there was literally nothing special about who he was, and she always finds something. So I really hated almost all of them, except Ricky. Ricky was like a 1950s greaser that just bopped into modern day. He even played Kinnicky in Greece at their high school. He wasn't just a handsome young man, he was beautiful inside and out, and he was sensitive. My sister had never been with a truly sweet kid before. He cared for her like no other human could. They were just instant. The first day they were together, it was like they had always been. Ricky isn't going to live to an old age. He had Lyme disease or something for several months as a kid before his cow dad finally took him to a doctor. He's okay now, but neurological problems are going to happen when he gets to about 50, so he doesn't feel like he has time to waste on trivial relationships. He was honest with me about it because he was thinking about a whole life with my sister, so he wanted me to know what that meant. He built his own car from just a VW bug shell and chassis, and when he finished, he built one for my sister. It was a 1969 white convertible bug. So beautiful. I already liked the kid as a person. I mean, I invited him over to my house as much as my sister did. I considered this young kid to be my friend. I was sure that even though they were just finishing high school, they were going to be husband and wife within the next few years. And I was thrilled. Then my little sister was assaulted. It was at a party he couldn't go to that night because he had schoolwork. It was so hard. He blamed himself. They never recovered from it. He stayed by her until the very end, but she went into some heavy depression. She started doing sweets, drinking to excess, and she cheated on him. A lot. My little sister wasn't the same. He forgave her for everything. Every time. He knew it was her dealing with the trauma, which is true, but she couldn't forgive herself for what she was doing to him and ended it. He was heartbroken, and I had to talk him out of suicide. My sister was his world. I still have Ricky's number. I gave him a car recently that I knew he could fix and sell. My dog cried when she saw him and wouldn't leave his lap while squealing with happiness. She's a German shepherd, so she isn't little. After about six years of his absence, I think she liked him more than even me. I don't expect that they'll ever get back together. Too much pain that wasn't either one's fault. But I've contacted him about cars a few times. I'm actually going to be taking him for a beer soon since I missed his 21st by a few years. His livable life is halfway over, and last I saw him, I noticed a tremble in his hands. He's still Ricky. He's still amazing. He still loves my sister. I still miss him. All the time. Story 4. Not a father, but I apparently won my father-in-law over by listening to him. His family is all girls. Three daughters plus wife. And apparently he was a verbally abusive alcoholic when he was younger. Since reformed, doesn't even drink during special occasions. So they all basically treat him like he doesn't exist because they resent him so much. Anyways, during one of our first meetings, he mentioned that he really liked Age of Empires 2. So, for Christmas that year, I gifted him, through GOG.com, a copy of Empire Earth. He teared up when he realized that I'd remembered what his favorite PC game was. Story 5. Hate Story. I decided to be a good boyfriend and brought pink roses, my GF's favorite color, when I picked GF up for our date. She loved them, put them in a vase, and left the vase on the kitchen counter. We went out. When I dropped her off, slightly before curfew because I really wanted her parents to trust me, her dad was cooler than being cool which is to say, ice cold, to me. Couldn't figure out why I'd done everything by the book. Ski daddled as quickly as I could, because whatever I had done was clearly the wrong move. She called me 30 minutes later to explain. GF's mom had come home, saw the roses, and assumed they were a gift from dad. Was so happy because he never does stuff like that for her, and it was so sweet and romantic. He came home. She thanked him for the thoughtful gesture. He said, what? A fight ensued. So basically, I got put in the cow house for blowing up dad's spot and ruining his evening. All because I wanted to be a good guy. Wow, that's some bad luck. Trying to do something nice ended up causing a big misunderstanding with her family. Story 6. My daughter was entering grad school and her boyfriend was headed to basic training two states away. Two months later, she returned from a visit wearing an engagement ring. At the end of training, his first assignment was to a place quite far away. He encouraged her to stay in school and finish rather than dropping out to join him. Short-term pain, long-term gain. He flew home at Christmas for a simple courthouse wedding. Then when she graduated, the service paid for her move to join him. Because the spouse gets benefits, but not the fiancé. End result. Approaching five-year Anav and trying for baby one. I couldn't be happier for her. Story 7. I feel like my daughter is an incredibly emotionally abusive relationship. When she was just living with her current husband, she came to visit me and do some shopping. They live about an hour away. A little while later, she stopped by my work in tears. He had called and told her to get home. He was hungry and he didn't care what plans she had made. She said, I never get to do anything for myself. And that made me weepy because who would want that for their child? Fast forward a few hours and I get off work and call her to see if she's okay. He is listening in when I told her I thought that was selfish of him. He proceeded to curse me out, told me he would have me arrested if I ever set foot in his house. 
It is now five years later, and I still hate him with every fiber of my being. Story 8. I originally posted this to slash r slash tales from tech support, but I think it fits here as well. This is the story of how I won over my GF as father the first time we met. My GF and I had been dating for a while, so it was time to do that whole, hey, come meet my family so they can judge you thing, which to be honest is still fairly terrifying as an older 20-something. About halfway into dinner, her dad starts complaining about his phone. Oh no, new technology this. Oh no, dollar cell phone company that, back in my day, yada yada. Turns out his touch screen had stopped working. Windows 8 phone. Surprise? And the company had told him over the phone he was going to have to come in and get it replaced at the low, low cost of 200 bucks. GF mentioned I knew a thing or two about tech. Because as we all know, being the person known for being techie automatically gets you shopped out as tech help to family slash friends slash neighbors slash random strangers in a line at the grocery store and that I should have a look at it. No problem, says I, of course still trying to make a good first impression. Two minutes of Google Foo to pull up which keys to press to get his phone to do a soft reset and it works perfectly. Best part. He turns to me and says, Son, you can come over and drink my beer and watch hockey on the big screen anytime you want. Story 9. Girlfriend in question here. The two of them climbed Mount Doom together. As an only child, my parents have always been cool with me bringing friends on holiday with me. We were going to New Zealand for a week when I was 19, so my SO came with us, even though it wasn't long after we started dating. My dad is the really athletic type, my mother and I really aren't, so normally on family holidays, dad would be off mountain climbing and bike riding and stuff like that on his own. He always encouraged me to go with him, but it wasn't really my thing, but my SO is really athletic. So on this occasion, they went climbing up one of the local mountains, which some of the Mount Doom scenes were filmed on. They got on really well together, and my dad really liked having the company of someone who enjoyed it as much as he did. Story 10. Well, my daughter is four and a half, and her boyfriend, Henry James, is the son of my best friend from college. We moved across the country when they did so we could raise our kids together. He and I are both mariners, so a commute of 3,000 miles isn't significant. The first time Henry met her, she was three and he was two and a half, and he unbuttoned her shirt in the back with little tiny buttons that took me forever to button up. Just a couple days ago, he pulled the smoothest line I ever heard when he said, I have a new flashlight, let's turn out the lights. I let that go, but about 15 minutes later, I heard all kinds of commotion coming from his bedroom and went to investigate. They were both in the bed, a little kid bed with a guardrail so he couldn't fall out, and they were chasing each other around and around, in a dark room with my little girl. I'm not going to say I like the little dude, but I respect that. I was 17 before I got a pretty girl in my bed in the dark. And now I think I ought to go clean my shotgun. Story 11. I do say my GF father likes me. The first time I met him, I was driving over to pick up my GF to go to the movies. I roll into the driveway, and the garage door was open, and inside was a 69 Mustang. Parts strewn everywhere, and an oil-covered, greasy, and thoroughly pissed-off man underneath said car. He was trying to get something unbolted, but was struggling to hold the part and operate the ratchet at the same time. I made note of said struggle and jumped underneath to help him. I figured I would give him a hand, then get up and meet my girlfriend and head out. But we ended up getting along pretty well, and I had lost track of time, and before I knew it, two HRS had passed. During this time, my girlfriend came out to find me working with her dad underneath this car, and she just let it be and brought us some sandwiches and sweet tea. She was more than happy to skip the movie date because she saw I was enjoying myself, and her dad was enjoying the help. I'm gonna marry this girl, and hopefully one day that car will become ours. Story 12 Growing up, I didn't learn about fixing household things or using tools in general, thanks dad. One time my girlfriend's father was working on fixing a washing machine. I offered to help him to demonstrate my value. He gave me the job of keeping track of screws and tools. After a few minutes, he asked me for Phillips screwdriver. I did not know what that meant and didn't want to seem useless. So I started looking at the labels of each screwdriver to hopefully find Phillips label on one. Seeing that, he leaned forward and took it himself while giving me that look. I think the man lost respect for me ever since. P.S. First thing I did coming home was to look up what the heck that meant. It turns out it just means cross-headed plus screwdriver. Oh, that's cruel. Tried to help fix the washing machine, but remained clueless when asked for a Phillips screwdriver. Apparently not too impressed with a friend's dad. Story 13. After only dating a couple months, my girlfriend and her parents went on a group vacation with my family due to a couple dropping out last minute. After only a few interactions, I find myself eating oysters and doing shots of tequila with her father on a beach in the Dominican. He comes right out with, I hope these oysters aren't putting too much lead in your pencil since you're sharing a room with my daughter. I'm obviously flustered and at a lack of words. He follows that up with, don't worry, I know she's a sex ally active woman. She gets her looks from her mother and her close relationship drive from me. That is followed up with a 30-minute conversation 
of his many conquests. I think he likes me. Edit. Wow, I'm loving all the responses. After two years, we are still together, and I have figured out her father is certifiably a real-life cartoon caricature. We drink a lot of Crown Royal together. He's awesome. Edit too. And now my GF knows my Reddit handle. Well, it was good while it lasted. Story 14. I have four daughters so I could write all day about their boyfriend adventures. Titles would be Dad, Rob Lowe is on the phone for you, the swastika and the Mexican gang member. Did you just leave an old folks home? But I'll write about, please, if there is a God, make this just a friend. My oldest, who could never handle her beauty, shows up at the house with her usual bad boy. He is obviously loaded, meth, and is going off about all his money and success. So I glance outside to see his full-blown 70,000 ride. But alas, all I see is my daughter's car. This guy can't quiet down and I'm terrified that he is the new man. My daughter tells me he is a bit manic. So I reach for some divine help that he is only a friend, but as enter the kitchen, they are deep in an embrace. Ouch. Now I'm a good dad, but there are times that I've let my daughters find their own way out of their own mess. So I informed my daughter that when the SHT hits the fan with this guy, do not come to me to bail you out. One month later, she calls and informs me that her car has been impounded as he was caught in her car, buying sweets from a sting. I reminded her of my stand, and she went on her way. Six months later, she shows up at the house with the most amazing guy she had ever dated. He doesn't have a trace of bad boy in him. Responsible, caring, clean, funny, and aware of the world. I figure he's toast or road terminate, because he is too nice, but I was wrong. Two cool kids and a solid, if not perfect, marriage. Sometimes dating bad boys can lead to good ending. Story 15. At first, I loathed this guy. He is an unpleasant person. Poorly done ICP tattoos. No education. Worked as a building maintenance. Smoked and drank quite a bit, but treated my daughter right. And then like a fungus, he grew on me. I was divorcing her mom and moved in with them. Found out he's a gamer. Then found out how much of a friend he was. Dude has your back through anything. Need to get picked up from jail? Done. Ex-wife steals your car, ripping out the fuses and license plates? No problem. He goes to pick up the car while I'm at work and puts it back together. Didn't ask for cash. The list goes on from there. He ended up leaving my daughter, but I still consider him my friend. Story 16. I was the boyfriend. My ex was from a super conservative NRA card carrying upper middle class white family. So when she brought home a poor Mexican, they weren't sure about me. I won them over with nerdiness. But more interesting is how I won over her grandparents. They were more than a little bit racist. Heard some casual use of the word person. So I assumed they were a lost cause. Well, they had some apple trees in the backyard. And eventually the yard just ends up full of rotting apples on the ground. I spent a day picking all the apples up and throwing them put. Hundreds of pounds of apples, all while being harassed by bees. After they saw how hard I was willing to work, I was welcome. Story 17. My father-in-law was the greatest from the get-go. He told me he could tell I had a genuine interest in his daughter and that her previous boyfriend selections were subpar. He also said that my interest extending to their entire family, not just her, made me stand out. I was always around. Their family was so unlike my own, I just found it a great place to be. He dropped a line on me the second time we met that made me instantly chuckle, but that had scared other boyfriends off. He's a big dude, six, five. I've got five acres, a shotgun, and a shovel. The last boyfriend left after he heard that, never to return. He told me later that I remind him of himself. We are both kind of goofy, but can get as serious as the situation calls for. We also hate golf and really don't care for watching sports on TV. I've always volunteered myself to help him out and have often just gone to hang out with him. We also have a love of cheap scotch. When I proposed to my wife, I had to get permission from him. He knew it was coming and proceeded to get me hammered in his backyard. He told me he still has the land, the shotgun, and the shovel, so divorce isn't an option. I told him it's not just her that I want to lock down. The whole family is amazing and I wanted to be a part of it. Oh, the feels. Been married to an awesome wife for five years. Our daughter just turned one. Life is great. Story 18. My father-in-law was really touchy around me, and you could see he wasn't really sure about the interloper in his daughter's life. I took him to a baseball game, and we got along all right, but he was still edgy. Afterwards, we were talking in his office when I noticed he had an Eagle Scout badge framed. I asked him what he did for his Eagle project, and we started talking, and I mentioned I was also an Eagle Scout. You could see his whole idea of me change almost instantly. He put in his Christmas letter that he approved of me dating his daughter, and we're now married with two kids and a third on the way. Story 19. My sisters. Edit ex-boyfriend. This was a few years ago. Sorry, I should have clarified. Boyfriend didn't ask her out until I left for college because he was afraid of me. When they became a couple, in Facebook snooped and saw his profile pic was him sitting in front of a Confederate flag holding two shotguns. We are from California, and my dad and I are avid hunters and trap shooters. 
It's our main hobby. So we both thought he was a shower instantly for the flag thing. Because if you have one of those in California, you are either a racist or a nonsense redneck poser. Then we invited him to our ranch. He accepted, and when we were going shooting, he told us he had never shot a gun before. So he took a picture with guns, but had never actually used one. What a flipping tool. Story 20. Not the father, but I think this story will fit in here. Seven years ago, I dated a girl who brought me home early in the relationship. This was in Georgia, and her entire family was stereotypical redneck. Camper and Harley, I'm the driveway. Rebel flag on the pole in the front yard, gun case in the living room, etc. When we get there, I find out he's prepared something special for my arrival. An unexpected visit from his even more redneck brother. The two of them spent the entire evening tag, teaming me with jokes and insults, just to see what reaction I would have. I decided the most appropriate response was to throw it right back at him, and we spent about five hours insulting each other. Before leaving, he said something I don't think I will ever forget. I like you, boy. Tell you what, I'm gonna do you a favor. You see that gun cabinet over there? I nod. Why don't you go pick yourself out one of them? Anyone you want. Not sure what to expect, I get up and walk towards the cabinet. About halfway to it, he follows up with, Cause that's the one I'm gonna shoot you with when you F this up. We left shortly after, but I already had a plan to win him over. About three weeks later, we go to his house again for his birthday. I made sure to hide my gift until he had opened all the others, and then handed him a bright pink sparkly bag. He opened it, and pulled out an airsoft pistol from Walmart and a jar of plastic pellets, and a note that said, I choose this one. His face lit up like a kid on Christmas, as he spent the rest of the day shooting his teenage nephew who lived with him. Flash forward six months, his daughter and I had split up, but he still called me up regularly to come over for some beers, I'm 19 at the time, and even invited me to do odd jobs with him like laying hardwood, paying me for hanging out, drink, and learn a skilled trade. I guess I won him over. I have since moved out of state, married a beautiful woman, and had an amazing daughter of my own. And thanks to my ex's dad, I have the perfect dad test. That's one crazy way to earn respect from your girlfriend's redneck dad, insults, and an airsoft gun? Who would have thought that'd do the trick? But hey, sounds like it worked out all right in the end. Story 21. Not a father, but a son-in-law. Wife was a bit of a partier smoker in college, which was rough as her family had a history of alcoholism. When we got together, I let her know it was a dangerous path she was on with that history and asked her for us to tone down the drinking and smoking. This really set in with her from me versus anyone else telling her the same thing. When I talked with her dad on a trip to the airport and asked for her hand, he got teary-eyed. This coming from a staff skit who served two tours in Iraq and was not the emotional guy and told me he saw her change right when we got together. Made me feel good, slash validated, slash part of the family. Story 22. I wouldn't say my ex's dad hated me, but he kind of pretended that my ex and I were just platonic roommates. I really did try to impress him. He liked to talk about science and politics, so I'd speak to him about that. I tried to take interest in his work, and I enthusiastically watched him change the brakes on my ex's front tires, and that was the first time I ever learned to do anything with cars. But he still never invited me anywhere when he invited my ex places, and he never talked about me with his daughter when the two of them went out. I think he might have liked me more if I had been a boy. Story 23. Father of three daughters here. Some random observations not in chronological order. Daughter hash one. Her boyfriend is competent, fiercely loyal, and caring. I expect they will marry, and I'm just hoping that they use birth control for a few years to get their feet underneath themselves. Both are chaste now. Daughter converted to Catholicism. Haven't discussed specific family planning issues yet, but no rush as daughter is very mature on those fronts. Daughter hash two. Boy follows her up to her room after she tells him to stay downstairs. I'm upstairs working in my office. Boy does not know this. I throw him back downstairs not because he came up to her room, but because he didn't listen to her, which is highly disrespectful. Read him the riot act. I think he is a slow learner, so stay tuned. Daughter hash three told me years ago that the same aged neighborhood boy was showing everyone his banana. Daughter hash three stated, it's big and out of control. She was about age six at the time. I went to the boy's father and related the observations. He agreed, it is big and out of control. We had a beer. That was 11 years ago, boy is doing okay. Story 24, my wife passed away whilst giving birth to our daughter. So naturally, my daughter and I are very close. From a young age, she would spend her spare time volunteering to help children who were ill or dying. And as she is a musician, she would also teach the children at the hospital. I work at how to play the piano and guitar. Along with her kindness, she is the most beautiful young woman I have ever laid my eyes on. She has the sweetest smile and her mother's big blue eyes. When she brought home this scruffy-looking guy who hadn't done well in school, who was unemployed and trying to make his band successful, I didn't like him at all. 
I'm very sorry if I offend anybody, but I just couldn't understand the attraction she had to him and hoped it would fade into nothing. She could do better. About a year into their relationship, my daughter discovered that she was pregnant. My heart sunk, not because I didn't want a grandchild, but because I knew she hadn't planned it, and I knew she was too kind to ever consider an alternative to keeping it. Her boyfriend approached me one evening shortly after the pregnancy was announced with a bottle of whiskey and asked if we could talk. I accepted the offer and we sat down and had a drink together. He confessed that he was scared to have a child, but how he had already started saving money and how he'd started looking for a job. He explained how he knew that he wasn't good enough for my daughter, but that he loved her with all of his heart and wanted to support her in her choice, even if that meant throwing away his music dreams. I will admit we both got very drunk and ended up getting along well. This boy I had first judged was actually a very nice, warm gentleman who simply wanted the best for my daughter and their future child. That was good enough for me, so I invited him to live with us and got him a job working at the same hospital I work for. Today I have two grandchildren and my daughter and future son-in-law are getting hitched next weekend. Edit. For those wondering, my daughter and son-in-law, need to get used to saying that, are doing really well for themselves now. My son-in-law still works with me at the hospital. He is a nursing assistant, trained on the job, and my daughter has just qualified as a social worker. They don't own their own house but are no longer living with me or rely on me for any funds, etc. I have a four-year-old granddaughter and a two-year-old grandson. My daughter was 20 having their first child, and my son-in-law was 23. It has taken a long time for them to get on track, but I am so proud of them both. As for the abortion comments, there was a time where I completely agreed with you, however. If I'd known how much happiness my grandchildren have brought to our small family back then, the thought of an alternative would never have crossed my mind. Thank you to those who have submitted their lovely comments and best wishes. It is a very kind of you all. Edit 2. Please do not mistake me for being ungrateful, unthankful, or ignorant, but I do not quite understand how Reddit gold works, and therefore it is almost a waste to award me with it. I really appreciate the kind gesture, but I'm sure there are more important causes to award gold to. Again, apologies if I seem ungrateful or unthankful. Please keep your money, folks. Thank you regardless. Edit 3. Most likely my final edit. My username comes from the fact that I am a doctor, and my surname is linked with the word rude, which was in fact my nickname throughout my childhood. A lot of people have had problems with my family's view on abortion, and that is completely fine. I, personally, am pro-abortion. Always have been, as I stated in a previous comment, I did my training at a clinic that delivers abortion. Which is pretty ironic when you think about it. This was just our specific situation, and I don't mean to offend anybody. Also, my daughter is my favorite human being, my entire world. And therefore, I have father rights to brag about her, and how wonderful she is. Finally, in regards to my romantic life, I do not exactly have much time. These past few days are the first days I've had off work in about four months. And I am also getting on in age. Therefore, I am not dating another woman and have little interest in doing so. Story 25. Well, I'm actually the boyfriend that the dad didn't like. When I first I met my girlfriend's dad, he had a long weekend. We didn't want to disturb him, so we went and watched movies in her room. Me, knowing dad worries, left the door completely open. We watched movies until maybe 10.30, at which time her dad called her into the living room. It was apparently time for me to leave, and she said he put it somewhat sternly. I put on my shoes, headed out, but he was already off to bed. The next weekend, they were having a water carnival in their town, a yearly event, and I show up. I saw him again and said I was sorry. I lost track of time. I wasn't planning on staying so late, and it wasn't my intention to disrespect him. I asked if there was anything I could do to make it up to him. The look on his face changed. He smiled a bit and said, You can help me make the burgers for all these folks. And we did. Eat it made some changes because trying to type on a small iPhone after a 20-hour workday leads to several mistakes. That was a little over two years ago. She lives with me now, and in a few months I'm going to have to sit him down again, this time to ask for his daughter's hand. Changing times of old bachelor man. Story 26. I'm the daughter. I went through a really tough breakup in November, and my somewhat new friend was there to help me through it. And of course we started dating. I never talked about him as my boyfriend because I was just not ready yet. My uncle called me one day asking if I would please bring over New Guy because uncle had a machine that needed a new part. And since New Guy does this sort of work, he would like him to look at it for him. I relayed the request, and in the middle of explaining what the machine needed, it dawned on me. I had never talked about New Guy to any of my extended family. He had only met my father because I live with him. So how did uncle know I was seeing someone new? Know that he owns a machine shop? Know that he lives really close to uncle and know his name? My dad, he was talking about him. Couldn't shut up about him, apparently. My dad has still not expressed to me that he likes my new friend, but he doesn't need to. I know. Story 27. 
I'm not a father or a daughter, but I am a son-in-law with a great relationship with my in-laws. When I was dating my wife and first met her parents, we traveled to meet them, and I was going to stay at their house. I wanted to make a good impression and knew her father loves to grill, so I bought her mom a bouquet of flowers and her father two big bone-in ribby steaks. I give him the steaks, and he shakes my hand and smiles, and we all start shooting the cow in the backyard. My then-girlfriend starts telling her dad that I like to cook, and he says, Great tuxedo as a jerk can cook the steaks. He laughs and she says something like, don't put that pressure on him, and he starts to take it back. I, however, recognize the opportunity and insist on cooking them. Now, the thing about my father-in-law is that for a guy who loves to cook his grill is a piece of cow. He leaves it out with no cover in the Midwest and has had it for about a decade. So the thing is spotty as fudge. I'm sweating over this grill, moving the steaks around to try and get them just right, and while it wasn't easy, they came out perfect. We serve and an old friend of my wife's shows up, tries the steak and commends my father-in-law who corrects him, and says that actually, I cooked them. This guy's jaw dropped. Apparently, I'm the only other person on the planet to ever touch the man's grill, which I'm thankful I didn't know at the time because the added pressure may have ruined me. It's now over three years later and we still get along great. Story 28. From the other side, my mother-in-law wasn't really sure of me through a good chunk of our long engagement. It wasn't until nearly the wedding that I finally got through to her. We were driving with her and my wife to pick up her wedding dress and the tire on her SUV blew out on a country road. Being a person who would rather do things myself, I waved off her phone into AAA and proceeded to get out, pull off the spare, and change the tire myself. We got on our way and picked up the dress with no other issues. It wasn't until weeks later that my wife told me that her mom actually pulled her aside to tell her that that specific act was what told her that I was an okay guy. Moral of the story, apparently changing a tire can warm the heart of a mother-in-law. Story 29. My father couldn't stand my now husband until one night about a month before the wedding. We were all at my parents' house watching a movie approximately 10 p.m. It was raining pretty heavily, so my father went downstairs to check the basement and discovered a sump pump had failed. We were flooding rapidly, and my parents' basement was full of expensive belongings. My parents had a ton of their stuff down there. My grandmother had just moved into a nursing home, and all of her furniture was down there. And I was between apartments at the time. We were getting married and closing on the purchase of a condo within a week of each other, about a month away, so almost everything I owned was down there too. My father started to have a full-blown panic attack. He couldn't figure out what to do. He was just freaking out. My fiancé stayed calm and started to issue instructions to everyone. He asked my mom to get out the phone book and find a 24-hour plumber. He asked me to start helping him shift things from the wet areas to the dry areas. Anything we couldn't remove entirely from the wet spots, he found things that weren't important, scrap wood, etc., and used them to elevate the things that were. At the end of night when everything was resolved and the pump was draining water again, we'd only lost one $30 IKEA coffee table, and that had been a deliberate sacrifice to elevate other things. From that day forward, my father's opinion of him improved dramatically. Story 30. My wife and I lent my daughter my wife's car to go to work. One night there was a heavy downpour and the street in front of their apartment started to flood. My daughter calls us hysterical because the street is flooding and she doesn't know what to do, WTF. So my wife and I head over and her street is flooded and my wife's car is stalled in the street and the water is rising. The water is so high that the car won't start. The rear interior is starting to flood. My daughter and I push the car out of the water to higher ground, but the inside of my wife's car is flooded on one side. He stayed inside the whole time and would not come out and help us. My daughter loves him so I tolerate him. But whenever my son and I talk about my daughter's husband, we call him the shower. Story 31. My ex's dad had one of those huge 90s Dodge Cummins. He would coal roll literally every car that was behind him, sending a thick black cloud of diesel breathe over everything in his wake. One day in front of my girlfriend, he was ragging on my truck. It's petrol. Saying how I can't blow breathe. I simply said, why is that cool? He kind of tripped up and just gave me that look where someone is pissed, but has nothing to say. Staggering for his words, I think he realized that there was literally no answer to that question. That didn't make him look like an unpleasant person or a moron. He finally came back with a, you're just jealous or some cow. And that's when I laid down all the negatives of modifying your truck to do this. From torque to gas mileage, I ran down every possible reason I could think of of why not to have exhaust like that. I even ended with saying, I thought it was classless and childish. All of this combined with the fact that I shut him up while his daughter was holding my arm visibly got to him. He, of course, had no retort. Dude never talked to me again. I was at BBQ's weddings church with this guy and he never spoke to me again. He bought a Jeep about six months later. Story 32. Boyfriend ex-boyfriend of the daughter. It's a weird situation. My girlfriend got a great job offer back in her hometown a couple states away and is back living with her parents for the time being. 
We agreed we wouldn't do long distance and she wanted some time apart, but she asked me to come visit her for the weekend in two weeks. She told me since she moved about a month and a half ago, every time she mentions my name, her dad makes it a point to mention how great of a guy I am. When he found out I was coming to visit, he called a friend and got us a free hotel room in the city for Saturday night and told me to stay at their house on Sunday night. Every time her dad was in our city for business or her and I went to visit her parents, he and I would talk about sports and business over a glass of scotch or a good bottle of red. With any other of my exes, I never really hit it off with their fathers like they were a buddy of mine. I have no idea how her and I's story will play out, but I know if I ever need help finding a job, he would be willing to help me in a second. He's a great guy that I hope I get to hang out with for years to come. Story 33. My fiancé's father, I think, likes me. Jokingly, my fiancé said that she thinks that her dad likes me more than her. When I first met him, it was at an art show that my fiancé, girlfriend at the time, was curating and we were introduced. I, being more of an extrovert than he, struck up a conversation about martial arts. I learned earlier that day that he studied Taekwondo for a few years, and I had done Chinese Kenpo and Jiu-Jitsu since I was eight. I'm 33 now, so we had a basic commonality to talk about to cut through any awkwardness. He ended up buying me a beer. Fast forward, I find out that he is an avid comic book collector, and so am I. So he starts giving me gifts at Xmas and my birthdays of rare comics in mint condition. Hulk hash 180, Iron Fist hash 1 hash 14, I was beside myself. A year ago, when we were at a beer tour, I pulled him aside and asked if I could have his daughter's hand in marriage, and he got all excited and hugged me and said, I already have accepted you into our family, but here is the official welcome. Ever since my daughter and you have been together, I have seen her grow in nothing but positive ways. Yes, you have my blessing. Taking the time to know what her dad is into before you meet him can go a long way. Edit. Misspelled Iron Fist. Story 34. I feel like my girlfriend's father hates me for a plethora of reasons. Number one being, I exist. He and his wife are the brand of Christian that forced their oldest son to marry a woman who is an absolute bad person to their son on a daily basis because he had gotten her pregnant. Not only did they force them to marry, but they also made them do it very quickly so their own reputation within their church wouldn't be sullied by a baby out of wedlock. Anyway, on to me. I'm not a religious person. In fact, neither is my SO because of them. But when we first met, I was in a ska band and was on my way to taking that on tour and making a name of it and had no real job or formal education outside of high school. I have a lot of visible tattoos, septum piercing, beard, and had massively stretched ears and glorious hair that was halfway down my back. I was a massive candy head and disc golfer. I moved their daughter from their hometown to mine so we could be closer. Oh, and I got their daughter, my SO pregnant. I had just taken a job as a service technician for a small company because I've always been very good with my hands. Did that phase him? Of course not. He's a commercial pilot who makes over 100 grand a year. I busted my peach to get to a good working wage, cut my hair, took out my gauges, stopped smoking candy, and am now the service foreman for this company. I've been told by the older of the owners of the company that I'm being groomed on how to run all of it so I can take over when he retires. Her father is still unimpressed. We have been together for four years. Our daughter was born in 2014. She is a stay-at-home mom, and I fully support my family and pay our bills and rent and we are set to be married in spring this year. He can think as little of me as he wants, because I know his backwards opinions and worldviews mean nothing to either of us, and I'm oh no sure not going anywhere, because I love my, soon to be, wife and my daughter more than anything in the world. So yeah, he hates me, but fudge him. Posting this was oddly therapeutic, sorry for rambling. Story 35. My ex's dad loved me for a pretty atypical reason. He had a great job and made a lot of money, but he lived alone, so he had trouble spending it for a while until he decided that he wanted the most ornate, perfect shower in the world. The shower in his bathroom had jets everywhere, water coming at you at high pressure from all angles. The floor and surround were this gorgeous, thick granite, and there was a sound system built into the walls. You could control the temperature of the water down to the degree and the ground was heated. One day, I stayed over with his daughter while he was out of town. We had just gone out the night before and I was feeling kind of grimy, so I was walking to the guest bathroom to clean up. She insisted I sneak a shower in his crazy mega shower, so I did. It was the best shower of my life, easily. I have dreams about it still. I want to get back together with this girl purely for the showers. Anyway, I finish up and I walk out in a towel. That was flipping incredible. And her dad replied, You enjoyed yourself? In a terse, you trespassed kind of tone. He came home early and scared the holy fudge out of me. The girl was nowhere to be seen. So I said, Sir, if you terminated me now, I'd pass away happy. It was perfect. Then he got all giddy and started asking me what I thought about each aspect. He got me a beer at 9 a.m. And we started drinking and talking about his magnify shower in great detail. 
I see him every now and then, and he'll tell me about new additions and stuff, and mention how I'm the one that got away.